Look at James chapter 2, verse 24. Let's just read it as it says. Notice what the Bible says right here. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Doesn't that look like, if you gave that to a first-timer, okay, wouldn't he honestly interpret that as faith and works? Yes. If you gave that to a Catholic, wouldn't he even obviously take that as faith and works? Yes. If you gave that to a baby Christian who didn't know anything, wouldn't he take that as faith and works? Yes. If you gave that to a fundamentalist pastor who pastored the church for 20 years and knows all doctrine, will he interpret the verse that way? No. You know why? Because he's trained, he already got brainwashed to interpret the verse how he wants to interpret it. That's right. See, that's not right interpretation of Scripture. It's just to make a simple read exactly as it says. Now, why is it hard to see salvation by faith, but then right here we have some works involved? It should be no surprise, because why? It's a Jewish theme, and it's also a tribulation theme. Let's look at Revelation 14, okay? So, Revelation is about the tribulation, alright? So, the book of Revelation is about the tribulation. Let's look at verse 12. Revelation 14, verse 12. This should not be a surprise that salvation by faith and works. Why? Because read Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. What does it plainly show? Faith and works. You show that to a first-timer. He'll get that. You'll show it to a baby Christian who doesn't know much doctrine. He'll get that. You show it to cults, they'll even get that. Even show them what the King James Bible says, they'll get that. Show it to a Christian who knows all the doctr major doctrines and grew up 10 years, he doesn't get that. And for some weird reason, he finds it confusing how you would interpret it that way. I should be the one confused why he's confused on that way. But if they think... So, fundamentalist Christians and some people, they cannot believe that this is saying faith and works for salvation. But it's very simple. That shouldn't be hard because look previously. Look at the verse behind it. How does it interpret? Here is the patience of the saints, right? So here is faith and works, right? This is how it interprets faith and works. It's connected to salvation. Look at verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You don't think salvation is involved right there? Yes, it is salvation. You're going to hell. Your soul goes to hell. By what? By taking the mark of the beast. But if you resist the mark of the beast, what did the Bible automatically interpret that as? Here is the patience of the saints. What? Here is what? Faith and works. You see how dispensationalism makes perfect sense? Amen. Because you read it exactly as the word says, and that's not hard to believe because looking at the historical background. See? Historical, grammatical context goes together. But if you reject that concept, any interpretation, anything goes. That's what happens. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. Let's also look at the book of 1 John. 1 John. We'll look at 1 John. And we're going to look at chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And we will read verse 18. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. Now, what makes me very uncomfortable is that Ray Comfort, when he talks about <clears throat> Christian, Christian salvation, the epistles he uses a lot are the book of 1 John. He uses that a lot. I had some people who were influenced by Ray Comfort, so they loved the book of 1 John because they were, trained, they were influenced to do that by Ray Comfort. But his salvation, which is unfortunate, is that he makes faith hard to do. Look at 1 John chapter 2, and we'll look at verse 18. Little children, what? It is the last time. See, tribulation theme. Not a surprise. Let's keep reading. As ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Tribulation. Not a surprise. So, this is not a surprise <clears throat> that John 
will consist of tribulation theme. Let's look at chapter 3, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Okay, if you don't love your brethren like you should, then what? Then you abide in death. You know you pass from death unto life because you love the brethren. Wait, I thought I was, I was passed from death unto life because of what? Jesus Christ. Salvation by faith alone. But John, he mentions a lot about faith here, believing, believing, but he includes works with the belief as well. You got to understand. Let's keep reading. Verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath what? Eternal life abiding in him. So notice, notice that John specifically stated that if you do not love the brethren like you should, you what? You definitely don't have eternal life. That's what he said. That's what he said right there. Read the verse exactly as it says. So this should not be a surprise to you. Why? Because it's what? A Jewish ministry under tribulation theme. Now remember, Jews are a physical nation, right? They're not a spiritual nation like Christians. They're a physical nation. Christians, because we are a spiritual nation, it should be no surprise. That's why all we need is something spiritual for salvation, faith alone. Amen. We don't have to do something physical or fleshy works. But right here, because Jews are a physical nation, it should be no surprise that they have what? Physical things to do. Works involved. See? So scripture, see how the scriptures all connect together and make things more perfect and makes more sense? Look at Jude. Jude. And look at verse 18. Jude and verse 18. Jude, verse 18. Notice what the Bible reads right here in Jude, verse 18. The Bible says, How that they told you there should be mockers when? In the last time. Okay, no surprise again. No surprise again. So, why? Because, what were the apostles under? Jewish ministry. Now, let's keep reading right here. Look at verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Look at that. So, we see some works here again. You have to keep yourself in God's love. So that what? So that what? You can gain eternal life. No surprise again. Let's also look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20. First Peter chapter 1, verse 20. If you believe in this, this historical background and reading the verses exactly as it says, trust me, when you read their writings, you will understand even more now. Scriptures will become even more clear to you than ever before. Look at the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest when? In these last times for you. All right, no surprise again, tribulation theme. Let's also look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 18. Chapter 4 and verse 18. Notice the Bible says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So this verse has been infamously used by cults to prove that a Christian has to be saved by works because a righteous man is scarcely being saved by the skin of his teeth, the way he's living. So then the lost sinners, wicked sinners, are definitely going to go to hell. So you see this passage has been infamously used for works, but it is not a problem for us because we already know what? These apostles, they were trained under Jesus, so it has a Jewish and tribulation theme. That should not be a surprise. Now, not only that, look at, we're going to look at two passages. Look at Galatians. 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 And we're going to look at Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. <clears throat> 
And we're going to look verses 8 and 9. Galatians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9. This verse plainly shows the distinction with what? The apostles' ministry and Paul's ministry. Because apostles were definitely Jewish, while Paul was definitely non-Jewish. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. The Bible reads right here, For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the who? Circumcision, Jews. The same was mighty in me, that's Paul, toward who? The Gentiles, non-Jews. He names other apostles here. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me, Paul, and Barnabas, the right hands of fellowship, that we... Paul should go unto the heathen, non-Jews, and they, James, John, the apostles, Peter, unto who? The circumcision, Jewish. So this shows a distinction right here. And that will become very eye-opening when you read the scriptures. Let's also look at the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Look at verse... 15, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. Notice that there is no doubt apostles' mindset and background is Jewish tribulation. So that's why their writings are going to be different from Paul. But what's even more plain is that they had a heart. They still don't understand Paul's writing. Now let me ask you this question. For Christians, do you think Paul's writings is harder to understand or the apostles, if you're very honest? as a saved Christian. Paul's writing is the easiest to understand, don't you think? Yeah, it is. But why did Peter say that Paul's writings are so hard to understand? Peter, your writing should be harder. The, the apostles' writing should be harder. Why Paul? See, because their teaching, training backgrounds were very different. Let's look at the book of 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse 15, An account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. So Peter is talking about Paul. Look at this, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things, what? Hard to be understood. Why? It should not be hard to be understood. It should be the greatest. I mean, the two best books of the Bible were Romans to Galatians. But I'll tell you what Romans and Galatians were the hardest books to. It was the hardest books to Catholics. It's the hardest books to the cults. Because they know that this is very plain. Faith alone, not by works. But you know what Catholic cults and different religions find the books of the Bible more easy than Paul's? These guys' writings. Because they know the verses to show faith and works for salvation. And they abuse James too. They use 1 John. They use all, a lot of other writings. Why? Because they're going to the wrong group of people and the wrong time period. But we know our group of people and time period. See, dispensationalism is absolutely important with this distinction, and it will clear up so much wrong doctrine and make everything eye-opening. If you deny this, then you know what you're denying? You're denying the historical evidence. You're also denying scriptural word-for-word, -word, reading the word exactly as it says, evidence. Your evidence is what? Just your interpretation how you want to make the verse sound like. So that's why this is an important doctrine that will be extremely helpful to understand.